Get double the protein for just two dollars more on your favorite sub or new protein bowl. Subway, eat fresh. Watch an NBC News investigative reporter, Brandy Zadrosny. Brandy, I want to start with you. Donald Trump has been a central figure in the QAnon conspiracy. Uh, what happens to QAnon on January 21st? Um, well, cults and, you know, churches don't generally just give up their messiahs. And we don't expect that to happen now. Um, whether, you know, Trump's in the White House or not, Trump seems to be the central figure with this group, and he seems like he will continue to be. Um, it's only deal. proven right so far as we look towards the um, his claims, his baseless claims that the election was contested, that he actually won. They are the main people sort of shepherding this lie, and so that's expected to continue. Clint, the social media companies, I would argue, over, particularly over the last, say, three months, did seem to make some efforts to to purge themselves of QAnon in a, in a, in a, in a way they didn't before. Um, looking back, how successful have they been? Um, and and or are these folks going to just migrate over to the parlors and the more extreme uh, sites around the internet? Chuck, you know we we do have some parallels that we can look at. There have been purges of different extre extremist groups over the years. And we see them try and coalesce on other platforms. And unless the platform is really strong, uh, meaning that it equals an engagement, it allows people to facilitate, it's easy to get to in terms of an app, the groups really struggle. Uh, and so what I think is interesting about QAnon and sort of this migration right now is you see this new app, Parler, really come online and you're seeing a coalescence of people moving there. Ultimately, though, I, I think it was a little bit too late on the social media company's part. Once they're already there, it allows them to spread and recruit. And this is consistent of all belief systems. Uh, the longer they're on these mainstream platforms, uh, the longer they're able to connect with like-minded people around the world. Brandy, QAnon, the whole QAnon conspiracy, in some ways, um, sort of fit hand in glove with the pandemic, whether we like it or not, right? The, whether it was the mask mandates whether it's anti-vaxxers. It, it, the it, there's a lot of parts of the pandemic that we're all dealing with that it feels as if the QAnon conspiracy is either using to build followers or, or what? How would you describe it? Yeah, the QAnon uh, conspiracy theory really acted as an umbrella. It sort of uh, covered everybody who was interested in the anti-lockdown um, protests, um, yeah. the, the election, um, and people who were arguing that the pandemic was either a hoax or that measures to um, sort of protect us from the pandemic were um, ridiculous, anti-mask, stuff like that. And what happened was, you know, we, we studied this on Facebook using this tool called CrowdTingle, and we could see the membership spike in March during the lockdown orders. So we would watch these QAnon groups before the platforms got rid of them, and we saw it worked like a line. And then right in March during the lockdown orders, you saw a crazy spike and those just continued and that happened in anti-vaccination groups and QAnon groups and we saw this incredible overlap yep. you know the biggest anti-vaccination group actually became explicitly a QAnon group that had hundreds of thousands of members and then we saw it spread to Instagram we saw you know these really flashy posts someone calls it pastel anon um, but it's lifestyle influencers mommy bloggers um, fitness gurus, alternative health people, and over the summer, you know, we even saw QAnon protests in some 200 different um, cities across the country. So we just saw it blanket everything. And Clint, no, we have our first good, member no. of Congress, Marjorie Taylor Greene, uh, got elected to Congress. Ready when you uh, are. QAnon follower. She's since tried to distance herself a little bit, but here she was at her orientation tweeting our first session of new member orientation covered covid in congress mass 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 i proudly told my freshman class that masks are go. in georgia we work out shop go to restaurants go to work in school okay. without masks my body my choice what does it mean to the QAnon movement to have somebody be an official Ready, people. candidate here in chuck what's always been strange about here. this is uh, conspiracies about deep states usually don't happen when a symbolic leader like President Trump that they admire so much is in power. Usually it's, you know, part of the information insurgency comes from outside and it's about a deep state. 
And I think in the case of this congresswoman, it's going to be very similar. Now she's in charge to a degree, right? She's going to be calling upon people to testify. She's going to be making decisions about votes and how those votes line up against an ideology that's pretty amorphous. So at what point does it begin to collapse on itself or not? Meaning that no matter what she does, uh, her supporters will continue to believe these conspiracy theories. They will make excuses oftentimes or change timelines or that it's part of a plot that's going to unfold in the future. And it really just shows the demand for this disinformation that we have in our society right now. The conspiracies combining with populism all brought together on social media. It's a way for a belief system to sort of orchestrate itself. And then when they do come into power, what will they do with it? I, what is the deep state when they are now part of the state? Well, that's what it is. It's the ease with which this is surfaced. Clint Watts, um, uh, Brandy Drosman, thank you both. Thank you all for being with us today. That's all we have. Thank you for watching. We'll be back next week from our new studio okay. next door to the Capitol. Because it's right. Sunday. It's right. Thank you. I understand. Cortana. What are we working on? Sorry, I'm not able to help with this one yet. Okay. Let me know when you can help me with that. Cortana. You're really smart, you know? I'm sorry, but I can't help with that yet. I understand. Cortana, do you know everything? I know the surface area of Denmark, but I don't know how much of the universe is dark matter. How much is dark matter? A lot of it. You can't see it, but it's there. It's another dimension. Follow the bouncy ball. You see the light? I see the light. Camera's on. Okay, stop. <laughs>